What's up everyone, Willy Apple here, and today Apple's released a third beta of macOS Tahoe. In this video, I will be showing you, you what is new inside the software. We've got quite a bit to talk about. Let's get started. All my M4 MacBook Air came in at 3.96 gigabytes, but this will depend depending on what version you're coming from and if it needs to reinstall the entire software or not. All right, what is new here inside Tahoe? The first thing you'll notice right here is that we got a brand new wallpaper. It should set itself by default, but this is what it looks like. It's basically just Lake Tahoe, which is really nice to see as the rock. So it even has a screensaver that I can't show you on this video because of recording purposes, but it's overall just a very nice wallpaper to have. I think it's gonna be a pretty popular wallpaper once it comes out. And I personally prefer this more than the Sequoia Sunrise wallpaper and even the Sonoma one. It's really nice to see. Now the next thing you'll notice immediately right away, if you go inside of settings, you'll notice that the liquid glass fade effect now properly shows inside the settings app. So before this would just it treat itself like Sequoia, but it would not have the liquid glass buttons. That would be the only difference. And the sidebar would be liquid glass. But other than that, it was the exact same, but it's now extremely nice to see that Apple's making it more consistent with macOS Tahoe. The next thing you will notice is that the sliders are a lot smaller. So if you go inside a desktop and dock, you'll notice immediately right off the bat that the sliders are a lot smaller. So basically all of these function as normal. It's just that the sliders now are smaller, more optimized for Mac. Some people will like it. Others like me, I personally prefer the bigger one, but we'll have to wait and see if Apple reverts or adjusts it or not, or maybe adds it as an option inside of accessibility settings. But hopefully wait and see if Apple does that or not. Now the next change has to do with the brightness and volume sliders. So if you were to tap the buttons on your keyboard, you'll notice that it doesn't animate anymore and that you have a smaller toggle than before. Of course, you could still drag and hold it, which I personally might do that because of the animation. But since they removed the animation, I don't think it looks as nice as it did before. Maybe if they brought it back with the bigger toggle or maybe the toggle they put inside of settings right here. It will look a lot better, but personally, me, I don't like that it doesn't animate anymore. We'll have to wait and see if Apple reverts that or not. It's also the same thing with the brightness toggles right here. So before, it would just be a lot bigger. Now, and animate, now it doesn't. Now, the next thing has to do with wallpapers. If you were to go inside of wallpaper right here and expand the landscape, you notice immediately after the Sequoia and Sonoma ones that we got some brand new wallpapers. We got Goss, Himalayas, the Ganges, I don't know how to pronounce that, Tea Gardens from above, and even more Tea Gardens, Reservoir, and a lot more, which is just really nice to see. So Tea Garden Mist is the last new one here. We got a total of 12 new wallpapers here inside of Mac OS Tahoe, which is extremely nice to see. And it gives people a lot more variety on how their desktop will look without doing a photo wallpaper like that. The next change has to do with iPhone mirroring. You'll notice here that immediately upon launching iPhone mirroring, the loading screen now has an iOS 26 wallpaper. Before this would be the iOS 18 wallpaper, but it's now extremely nice to see that Apple has updated it to make it look a lot nicer here inside of Tahoe and more consistent with iOS. The next thing has to do with the apps app. If you were to open up the apps app, let me just put it right here real quick. You'll notice that it is a little bit glitchy. It sometimes doesn't open the apps app. It just does default spotlight search. But if you were to just go inside the apps app manually like that, you'll notice that it has been completely redesigned right here. So these are recent apps right here. And if you were to scroll down, you'll notice that is a lot better behavior than it was before. It's now alphabetical order. So I guess Apple's starting to listen to our feedback about Launchpad being removed. And I think this is a lot better behavior than it was before. And Apple has actually removed the category feature. So in order to view categories now, you got actually got to click the category up here, which I think is a lot better behavior than just having it all displayed right here like in the app library. App library makes sense, but the doing it in the apps app didn't make a ton of sense. But it's extremely nice to see that everything's now in alphabetical order. And you may notice here that show iPhone apps is now a thing. So if you were to turn show iPhone apps, it will just show all of your iPhone apps, which I think is a lot better behavior than before. Before show iPhone apps was on by default and there was no way to turn it off. Now you can just turn it off, which I think a lot of people will be doing since all it does is just open up iPhone mirroring to begin with. But yeah, 
the apps app is definitely a lot better here inside of beta 3. I haven't decided if I'm going to try going back to launchpad quite yet. Let me know down in the comments down below if they did patch the launchpad hack. You will need to do it every single time you update, unfortunately, but let me know down in the comments down below if they patched it or not. Now the next change has to do with the messages app and if you were to go to a sidebar inside of any message you'll notice a couple of differences right here. The first one is that the X button is now a thing and this will just close the sidebar and the next thing is that links is now hidden for whatever reason so hopefully Apple brings that back. I have no idea why they would hide the links. It's pretty weird to see but also a good note inside of beta 3 that they have affected it a little bit. You also notice that the toggles here now match the system. It is not liquid glass right now as you can see right here, but it is still system consistent, but Apple still needs to adjust the toggles to make it liquid glass. I wonder if they need to do it across all the iOS apps ported to the Mac, or if it's just the Messages app. Before it would just look really bad and inconsistent, but now it is a lot more consistent. But inside of here, this was also changed. It doesn't have a background anymore. And it's just more like the system now that you would expect inside of iOS. And if just clicking on it, automatically translate now has a drop down menu that looks a lot better. Now the next change has to do with the App Store. If you go inside the App Store right here, notice that it looks a hundred times better than it did in the previous two betas. That's because the corners are now rounded. So before it would have like a five pixel radius, now it has more like a 10 or 12, which is extremely nice to see. You also notice that this is throughout the entire App Store. At pretty much everything got rounded. You'll notice that these arcade button categories right here got rounded. It's overall just very nice to see that Apple is making the App Store more consistent with macOS. You also notice that if you search up an app right here, the iPhone and iPad's app button now is more rounded. So before it would be the exact same as it was inside Sequoia. Now it is how it should be in Tahoe, rounded and consistent with macOS. The next change has to do with the games app. If you were to open up the games app right here, you notice that things are scaled a lot differently. So right off the bat, you notice that this top banner here is a lot smaller. And if you were to scroll down a bit, you notice that everything's pretty much smaller. So some things are bigger. I think that the gaming begins a lot bigger and like top arcade games is smaller. This is the same size, but it's overall very nice to see that Apple has been adjusting the games app to make it look a lot better than it was before, but it's pretty nice to see. Now the next thing has to do with the journal app. If you go inside the journal app right here, you notice that the offline button is now no longer attached with the plus button. It's now completely separate. Personally, I think the offline button should be somewhere else, maybe here in the sidebar but still I think this looks kind of bad, but we'll hopefully wait and see if Apple adjusts the offline button or not. This isn't really a button, just shows a status, so it makes sense that it is not attached to the plus button according to Apple's guidelines for design, but it's overall just very nice to see that Apple is constantly adjusting their new apps to make it look a lot better inside of Tahoe. The next thing you'll notice here is that inside of Mission Control, you'll notice that this plus button right here is now a liquid glass button. So before it would just be no background, just a plus button. Now it has the liquid glass effect, which is extremely nice to see and overall makes things a lot more consistent inside of macOS. Now the next thing is that if you were to go inside of an app and go inside of view, you'll notice that we got a brand new glyph icon for enter full screen. So before we did not have this glyph icon before, now we have this glyph icon which makes it a lot more prominent that this means enter full screen than anything else and I think Apple should constantly be adjusting these to make it look like they actually care about the glyph icons because so, I think this kind of looks pretty bad at how it is right now. I think new window needs a new glyph icon, but hopefully Apple continues to add new glyph icons throughout the system and make things look really nice. Anyways, that is everything I could spot inside of macOS Tahoe. Let me know down in the comments down below what you think of the software. And now let's talk about the Geekbench score. Inside of beta 2 right here, you'll be noticing that the multi-score is 15306 and single core is 36903. Now I'm going to pull up the Geekbench score I did run right here, and you'll notice that it is 36.69 and 15.127. You'll notice that both of them are a little bit lower, which is unfortunate to see, but overall they're still pretty much tied. It could be that it was the system was too hot still. It overall feels a lot smoother, but we'll hopefully have to wait and see based on performance alone if beta 3. We did get a lot of changes here, probably more than beta 2, so performance could be dipped a little bit, 
but is also kind of a consequence of Beta 3 having a lot of changes, including a new wallpaper, which is really nice to see. All right, the next thing that we're gonna be talking about here is what is next for Apple? So I have a little July calendar right here. So today is July 7th. What I think is next is gonna be the public beta of Mac OS Tahoe. We're gonna get a smaller beta 3.5 most likely here on the 14th or the 15th, and then immediately after, Apple will be releasing the public beta to everyone. So what the public beta is, is that it is meant for anybody who is interested in helping the next Mac OS. So we're gonna get a lot of changes here, making it a lot smoother throughout the course of the next betas, and we'll hopefully go to a one week cycle after the 21st or the 28th. We'll have to wait and see if that's actually the case, but overall, Mac OS feels very stable, very smooth, and that I think we're gonna get the public beta here very shortly. Now we do have a couple of visual bugs. These bugs have existed since beta one. I forgot to report it, unfortunately. Don't make me a role model. Report your bugs inside the feedback app and report any suggestions inside the feedback app because if other people suggest, that means Apple will be constantly reading that. But overall, I expect the public beta to come next. Now, thanks for watching. Comment, subscribe, share this with your friends. Download my apps in the description down below and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.